let's look at selection lists. We have them here, and we can continue just talking about forms. Works similarly to the previous example and things that have come before. We're going to have a multi-selection here. Use the controller command key to multi-select either one of these. We have three here, and this one doesn't really count, so we'll select here. And then we have two here, and we have post-grad selected here for our education level. And what you can do is you can see the source code for that. It works just like regular HTML. We have to name it and look at the options as far as the field is concerned. And we set a get or a post. Here to get. Here's the query string again. The same URI here with this string here as the query string. And then we have the script name all attached together. The refer as we have looked at. But the important thing to look at is that for the education, we don't have the text that was visible there. We have the number four. And then for the operating system, we break it out and we see that we have multi-selections here. We have bold info here for the operating system. We have three different ones. And then we have Windows and Linux here for the OS here, just the other way of doing it. And then you can see we break it out. There we go. It shows how many parameters OS has and how many operating system has, two and three respectively, and fname just has one. So let's take a look at that code and see what it's doing there. Process lists in the scripts section in the web forms folder, within the web forms folder and then scripts. This is where we're going to take a peek at this information here. So we can have that go up there and just see that we're still doing the same thing with the count there to see if get has a count greater than zero. And we can actually get a count of the get of the operating system because now it's actually going to be an array that's passed there as you can see here another array so we have a count that's not going to be one of course then we have additional parameters that we need to check and you can also see we're doing an is set here as well to see if the operating system was set and this should actually be the OS instead of that operating system because below here is where we actually are going to use operating system. You can cut and paste that code so it's very easy to see how you can make a mistake there, but luckily that worked out good. So we just do a for each on that array as we're used to, key value pair, and then echo them out. We can see that the count there is going to be echoed as well, and then we check to see if, if it's set, and then for each we're going to echo it out. If it's only one, it's only going to show one, and it's going to be treated like an array. And you can see that's how you can get those multiple values there when you have multi-selections. And that's really the key to this example. We don't have to go over everything else we've already covered, but that's really, really the critical part there. And for this last one, these two were considered arrays. But this last one here, count of get, you know that count's not going to be three or two. It's going to be one. But we need to check to see if it's an array first, is array. And that F name isn't an array. So then we just echo it out as a get. So you have to be careful there because you don't want to deal with the actual arrays there and treat them like regular variables or vice versa. So that's really what counts there. You should know what to process there. You know if something's going to be an array and you know if something's not going to be an array. And you also have to check out to make sure that if there's one item there that it's not going to be considered an array either. So that's something to consider. So is array is important. You can actually have it up here as well, right after the is set and right before the for each. And you can try that out yourself, a nested if and then a for each. But that's really all there is to it. You have to just practice that one. And if you need that functionality, well, you have the code right here to take a peek at it. And we'll look at this on the other page. We see that for this selection here, if we peek down here, you see the list values are item labels and values. If we don't have the values here, we just assume the label that's going to get passed. But it's great to have a value here set that we can actually put into our database. And you can see that value is going to be here. And this is what's going to be sent over. That's what we have a for because we picked post-grad.